Hello, I'm Dr. Manus Kumar Roy. I'm a GI HPV surgeon specializing in oncology in Narayana Health Hospital, RN Tagore Hospital, Mukundapur in Calcutta. Uh, thank you for visiting this Facebook uh, page and sending us a few questions. I'll be taking some of the questions and answering as we go along. The first question is, Now, let me answer this by sharing with you the basic philosophy of a cancer growth. When a cancer starts by division of cells, it usually spreads to most of the organs of our body, but these cells remain extremely dormant or sleeping cells. So when we do uh, imaging, uh, the staging of the cancer, by say a PET scan or a CT scan or MRI, these cells, which has gone to the rest of the body and are silent, they're not picked up by these imaging techniques. It's quite possible that these cells will remain sleeping or dormant for the rest of the life, but it's also possible and almost and also does occur that it starts growing and after a few years after the completion of the treatment, a cancer can come back to some remote organs like the lungs, the liver, the bone, which we call as metastasis. So there is no easy answer to the question, can stomach cancer be cured completely? When we start a treatment of any cancer, and if the staging has shown it to be a localized disease, our intent is to cure the cancer. The biology of a cancer varies from diff organ to organ. And as far as stomach cancer is concerned, generally speaking, if the patient survives for five years after the cancer has been treated, we can generally say that the patient has been cured of the stomach cancer. And this philosophy holds true for most of the cancer of the abdomen. Now, stomach is a hollow organ, it's like a bag. So a small tumor, a small growth will not give any signs. But having said so, if there is a change in some eating pattern, loss of appetite, some acid or gas, gas feeling, gaseous feeling in the abdomen, which had never occurred before, or if a patient normally is on antacids, but if the pattern of the acidity, say, first development of a heartburns or reflux disease comes up, then we should be thinking of stomach cancer. Often, patients may have abdominal pain, but this not necessarily be so. And at times, patients of stomach cancer lose blood from the tumor. And this may not alter the sign, the color of the stool, but his hemoglobin may drop down and the patient generally feel unwell, tired and weak. And on checking, it is found to have low hemoglobin. So these are the initial, very subtle warning signs of stomach cancer, which should not be ignored. As I alluded to in my second question, the previous one, the initial symptoms can be extremely subtle and patient may have developed the tumor a few months ago and hence is one of the reasons why patients often present rather late. It's just bad luck that there are not many definitive early signs or symptoms at the initial stage. Now for those for you of you who are not familiar with the medical terms, recurrence is a reoccurrence of a cancer after a successful treatment of the cancer in the first place. So for example, in stomach cancer, 
You have done a CT scan and it appears to be a localized disease. The contemporary treatment is to offer four cycles of chemotherapy and then go for a radical stomach cancer surgery, which we call as gastrectomy, and follow it up by another four cycles of chemotherapy. And then the patient is kept on a long-term surveillance program, wherein we repeat blood tests and CT scans at, at a predefined interval. Now, after three, four years, if the bad luck, then the cancer can come back, say in the liver or the lungs or the rest of the abdomen. This is what the doctors call as a recurrence. The question is, um, do this recurrence come with some symptoms or signs? The answer is yes and no. Quite often, the recurrence is silent and we pick it up when we do uh, the routine tests at regular intervals. But at many times, uh, patients do have symptoms and signs. For example, loss of appetite. The usual area where the stomach cancer comes back is in the liver and, and on, on, the, on the nodes on the back of our close to our spine, spine. And hence, patients start losing the appetite. They generally feel unwell and lethargic and tired. If the nodes at the back of our abdomen gets involved, patient may have intractable abdominal pain. And if the recurrence affects the lining of the abdominal cavity, then a lot of fluid is produced in the abdomen, which is called ascites. And patients can come to you saying that my belly is increasing in size and I'm feeling unwell. Uh, so in all honesty, uh, if a patient has had a good treatment after the, of a gastric cancer, the symptoms that he or she should, should watch out for is uh, weakness, tired, not feeling well, lack of appetite. Uh, that's about it. Now, once again, H. pylori stands for Helicobacter pylori. It is a bacteria which infects our stomach. It is there in most of the individuals, especially in India, because it's, it, it moves with water, uh, in the contaminated water. And uh, it was linked many years ago yeah, as a etiology for peptic ulcer disease. Uh, so interestingly, for ulcer disease, patients nowadays not only re receive antacids, but they're also given a course where antacids are combined with antibiotics. Now this H. pylori has also been linked to the causation of stomach cancer. Uh, it is not a very definite link because the prevalence of H. pylori in the human population is very high, but the incidence of stomach cancer is not that high. But during endoscopy, if we do diagnose the presence of H. pylori, then it's almost mandatory that should, we should treat this with some antibiotics and antacids. From the very outset, of the, it's difficult to establish a link between thyroid disease and the GI tract. It would appear um, that your thyroid is well controlled because you're suffering for the last nine years. And it is just the stress and anxiety has got the better of you. And hence, you're unable to cope with the social pressure. Um, if the thyroid is not adequately functioning, then yes, you lose your appetite, you'll become constipated. But if your thyroid is producing too much of hormones or you're taking excessive dose of the thyronorm, which is artificial thyroid hormone, 
then you will have loss of uh, weight, you'll have excessive diarrhea. These are the link between thyroid function and uh, GI uh, disease. And I would suggest you should consult an endocrinologist. Thank you for very much for uh, reaching us with the questions and I hope we have cleared some of the answers. Thank you.